everybody. Um, so in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to do the base layer for um, this spaniel here. Um, it's a black and tan spaniel so it's part of a triple portrait. I've already done one of them up here which is on a previous video if you want to go and check that out. It was kind of just showing you how I got the shiny fur and did the spaniel ears. Um, and then this is the uh, other dog that I'm doing. So I'm going to start by using pan pastels as a base to get the kind of underpainting done as if you were doing like an oil painting. So I'm starting by using pan pastels which come in these little plastic containers. You can get I think around 80 colours. I don't have the full set. I have the animal set here. Um, which has got how many colours has it got three six nine ten colours in it and I have ordered some more as well which I feel like I'm missing from here um, the colours I've got in this particular animal set are titanium white neutral grey burnt sienna Payne's grey red iron raw umber burnt sienna neutral grey and another raw umber tint so that's how they sort of colour everything. They'll have the raw rumba and then they do the tint of it. And there's different tints to get the different values. So they're quite easy to use when you're building up the values of your piece. So I'm going to start by going in with... Just poured all that over there. That's good. I'm going to start by going in with the um, black first. As you can see from the reference photo, there's actually quite a lot of blue within this dog's fur. So I will introduce that, but initially I'm going to just put in the darkest points I can see and then go from there. I'll be applying it using the pan pastel tool, which is this soft tool here. I'm going to put a bit of, I like to use this glassine paper as well just to like rest my hand on when I'm working, especially with pastels because they're so easily smudged and you don't want the oils of your hand to go into the paper either. So I'm just going to put some black on there. You'll see how beautifully it soaks into the pastel mat. But it's workable, it's kind of pliable, it can be blended out and that's the best way to do it. lots of thinner layers so just blend it and get it into the tooth of the paper so you can get that's really noisy I'm sorry I'm just gonna fold that out a bit so. so there's a dark bit here and there's a dark bit at the top of the ear here Sorry if you can hear the rain, it's so rainy here today in the UK. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting in the darkest values I can initially see in the <laughs> reference photo. Um, an easy way to do this without getting kind of hung up on all the detail is to actually kind of squint your eyes a little bit when you're looking at the photo because that will then just draw out the values as opposed to all the details which we're not interested in at this stage. That isn't about a detailed realistic kind of portrait, you want your values to be right. What I'm also trying to do as well is when I'm applying the pan pastels to the matte board I'm going in the direction that the fur is going so although it looks like it's just a plain black kind of blob at this stage you can still when you closely look see the details coming through of the hair so if you follow that all the way through it really helps to build up that realism in the picture I'm actually going to move this <clears throat> for the time being because it's being really noisy on the microphone so there's quite a dark patch around because it's quite a small scale 
with having three dogs on here I won't use pan pastels to build up the eyes because I can't get the application small enough so I'm going to leave the eyes for the time being and I will do those with the um, pit pastels which I'll show you in a bit This also helps to kind of map out, you know, where all the areas are on the dog's face so that you can make sure that your initial sketch is accurate, especially if it's for a commission. Make sure everything's where it needs to be. eye bone here. These applicators are really good however when you're using them on the pastel mold because it's got quite a grip to it, quite a texture to it, it does get through them quite quickly. I don't know if you might, camera might not be able to pick it up but it's already kind of creating a bit of a hole here so I will need to change this soon. So you tend to get through a couple per piece on the applicators which is a bit of a pain. Um, I think someone else said you can kind of use makeup brushes, but I haven't actually tried those yet, so I don't know if they're the same or might be worth giving it a go. So it will look quite ugly at this initial stage because you're just blocking in the dark areas so it's going to look a little strange let's go back over to this side so the eyes kind of down here so there's a dark area around there and there's a dark area at the top of the eye. And it's kind of coming up to meet that centre section there. And then the inner one. I think we'll go and do this ear now. So you can see it's kind of dark at the top. So we can kind of flick this out slightly to blend it out. beauty of these is you can obviously build them up and build them up if you want all the fine details then go for it or you can leave it very much like a sort of painterly feel so it really depends on what style you want and what you prefer working in so you can create quite different pieces of work depending on how many layers you want to use and how much you want to kind of work into it And I'm just getting in the cowed ears, which the spaniels are known for. And then there's the odd little bit here, which I'm going to do. There's quite a dark bit where the eye is here. Under the eye, sorry. And then I'm going to do where the nose is. There's the sort of tanned colour here, and then there's a dark area at the top of the nose which kind of fans out. Um, so it's like working out where the centre point is for the nose here so it's sort of around this point so I'll kind of do it there and flick it out <clears throat> I'm 
And it's, to me, this is the most important bit, getting the values of your work right, if, especially if you want to kind of create realistic paintings and portraits. <sighs> colour theory and how colours work together is obviously important, but if you don't have the darks dark enough and the lights light enough, then it's never going to look 3D. It's never going to look realistic. So I would say to focus mainly on getting the values in then obviously try and match the colours but it's not the end of the world if they're not exactly the same because if your values are right then it will still look realistic it will just look like it's got a slightly different lighting over it I think when I started out I kind of you can get apps where you can like pick which colours and it does it all for you and which is great However, you can get a bit hung up on what colours you need and then you look at your painting and it's looking quite wishy-washy or looks too light in areas or too dark in areas. So I think the main thing to focus on is definitely the values of the picture. So there's dark coming down the side here. pretty dark all down here isn't it because it's kind of under his chin now I would normally kind of if this was a lighter fur I would putty out these lines I've just got a putty rubber here it's the Derwent one it's a bit had it now to be honest um, so you can just dab away you do have to be careful on the pastel mat not to rub too hard because it can kind of change the grain of the picture and almost lift it off a bit the application of the surface it can kind of lift it away so you have to be a little bit careful but you can just i'll do an example i should do it here so you can kind of lift it off a little bit so you don't see the fur so much not the further lines so much sorry um so but because it's dark i'm not going to worry about that too much at the moment <clears throat> so i'm just going to come down into this pore here and that's all very dark down there so i'll come back to that in a moment i'm just going to go up here now and mark on this ear so it's quite blue at the top here there's a tiny little bits coming off here that are darker Again, with the ears, again, you can get a bit lost in all the little details and which curl is going where. But I'd say just map out the, the main areas, the main shapes that you see. Um, like we can see in the reference, there's quite a big curl here, so I've kind of drawn that in. There's quite a big one down here. And then all the little ones you can worry about at the end, but you know, you don't need to copy exactly unless you want to. like that bit there that I've marked in is that sort of tanned kind of area so I'm just going to go down the side of that it's quite dark all around here and dark kind of coming down Obviously with these it does create quite a bit of dust, but you you know with when the coloured pencils I used to use the um brush. I'll show you which I used to just use if I'm using doing coloured pencils, I just used a cheap kind of blusher brush to brush it away. But obviously with these, that's kind of a no-go because you're gonna just smudge it everywhere. So I tend to just blow it, but you can get the sort of air I don't know what you call them, like 
pipette things that I need to probably invest in or get one but Because on the reference it's kind of a blunt edge here, so I'm going to kind of blur it away um, when it comes to it. So, this is actually quite light, so there's a little dark patch there. This is the foot here, so there's a tiny little bit of, what is that, so that's there, that's there, that's there, so these slightly bit of grey there, I'll just block in, that's that foot, so there's not really much going on there, but there's quite a lot of dark down this area here, which again try and follow the direction of the fur if you can. Just blend that out towards the end here so there's not a harsh edge. So go back over and check there's no areas of me. Obviously the nose, but I'm kind of gonna I might just block in that bit actually. The nose I'm gonna do like the eyes and focus it more with the um the pencils just block it in a bit but other than that I'm not going to do too much because I want to get all the nice detail in and so you can kind of see where the areas are now you've got obviously the really dark areas here you've got the ears kind of shaded in around the eyes the center bit of the nose might just bring that out a little bit here so now what I'm going to do I'm not going to add any more pastel to the board and I'm just going to use the same application and fill in the areas here because obviously it's kind of a black under layer we don't want a stark contrast between the black and the sort of grey blue so I'm kind of going to blend this all in um, using this without putting any more pastel on and then I'll come back and I'll show you um, how to kind of add the blue fur in. So 
as you can see I've kind of blended out all the black areas without adding any more colour onto it um, again it still looks a little bit ugly at this stage but bear with me um, I'm now going to add in a bit of blue um, you'll see in the reference photo there's quite a lot of blue around here the tip of the nose through the ear so I kind of want to get those areas in um, and then we can work on the sort of tanned colour so I think for the blue I'm going to use get it out. I'm going to use this pan pastel which is it's more of a grey it's the Payne's grey the 840.3 Sort of this colour here. Um, what you might find useful, um, especially when you're a beginner, when you're not quite sure on how the colours work together, is I just kind of place a bit of an offcut of the board next to my picture because um, I buy my pastel mat in the big sheets of board, so sometimes I'll get the odd bit that um, I can cut off. So I kind of use it, oh, if I'll just get it so you can see, bear with me. So I've kind of got a little off cut here which I can kind of mix the colours on to see if they work um, and see how they show on the actual colour I'm using. Um, the reason I kind of use a grey or a brown base colour is it's kind of a mid-tone which I think is quite important when you're using pastels as it is in maybe oils as well because um, it allows you to get the values right, get your highlights where you want them to be. When you're working on a white or a lighter paper, it can be quite difficult get, to get the highlights right. Um, so yeah, if you have that sort of next to you, you can then just check that the colours are alright. So I'm going to just check that the blue is how I sort of want it to be on this board here. It's just off, just off screen, I think, sorry. But yeah, so that's quite a nice kind of grey grey blue so I'm going to apply that to the areas I can see it on on the reference photo which are sort of a look up here in the other spaniel I drew on this portrait there wasn't really much blue in the fur at all but this one obviously where the light's hitting it it's different lighting I suppose isn't it so again following the direction of the fur and blending it out so it doesn't look obviously blue as such I'm hardly touching the paper it's really soft blending just making it get into the tooth of the paper that's why I love the pastel mat because although it is a little bit pricey you can get so much pigment on there and so many layers on there I um, get the board in I think it's the 50 by 70 centimeter sheet um, and it, I just buy it off Jackson's and it is the board that I have but they do it in pads, they do it in sheets um, some people notice a difference between the pads and the boards and I have to say the pads do feel like they are slightly rougher in texture but they shouldn't be, it should be exactly the same product but there is a slight difference to them so I do prefer the boards because they are that bit smoother to me but try it and see what you think. Some people might like the rougher texture of the pads. It must be the way they apply the surface to the backing board, I think. I've actually just changed you'll see there's the hole there so you know I said you get through them quite quickly so it had already got through it pretty much so I've just turned it round and I'm using this side so you can kind of get two wires out of them 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm on the other side now, so it's a little bit smoother because the holes kind of come through. So you don't want to be scratching your board. There's a little bit of blue here. Kind of looks like some weird robot dog at the minute, but it will come together, I promise. It used to really put me off doing it when it was like this, because you want it to kind of look great from the beginning, and it kind of doesn't give you much motivation when you see it in these ugly stages. But you kind of have to bear with it, and then it will suddenly come to life. We hope. Uh, it's quite light here, so I'm just going to put quite a bit of blue here. I say blue, it's more of a grey, isn't it? It's the Payne's grey, but it looks quite steely blue, isn't it? bottom where the shine sort of comes down from the end of the year. And there's quite a bit in this black fur as well down here. So as you can see, the, the pastels initially go down very quickly. So if you're not very patient like myself, then these are good for you. Um, I loved doing coloured pencil work, and I still love doing coloured pencil work, but you really do have to have quite a bit more time um, and be in the right mindset, I think. But it is very good mindfulness with coloured pencils because you do have to slow things right down. Whereas pastels... It kind of comes to life a little bit quicker. However, you can spend just as long with the finer details. But the initial layers are much quicker to get down, I think, with, with these. So I don't think I'm going to add any more blue in at this stage. I might come back and do that in a bit, depending if I need to. Um... So I'm now going to go on to the sort of tanned areas of the dog. So you've got the eyebrow areas and kind of around the muzzle and the paws. So I'm going to use for the orangey kind of tanned colour. I'm going to use the Pan Pastel Burnt Sienna. 740.5 I think it is. This kind of colour here. So... Again, I've just brushed off the colour onto the spare paper so you're not going to get the black going onto there. And then we're just going to get in the dark areas of this. This really complements the blue as well because it's kind of the opposite side of the colour spectrum. So it kind of really complements each other.
again going in the direction of the fur and kind of fanning it out neighbour's dog barking in the background and then you've got this dark colour sort of under here haven't we near the bridge of the nose Going up into here. kind of it for that tanned colour just for now anyway I'll probably come back to it I'm sure and now I think I'm going to use um, a lighter colour I'm going to try see if it works this these are really good as well these sticks so these are the unison um, colour pastels sticks and um, they're handmade soft pastels um, so I'm going to use this colour which is the BE14 um, so I'm going to just apply that directly onto the paper however you can also kind of flake bits off and use it on your palette so it's whatever you prefer I'm just going to kind of get in here with this lighter colour it initially looks quite bright but obviously this is going to be blended in in a minute so
mean in the tool just really softly blending this in so as you'll see it takes it right back It's kind of coming together now, getting all the blending in. I'm just going to use this lighter stick here which again is the unison one this is the BE one and I'm just going to kind of gently block in the lighter feet I'm not going to worry too much at this stage about all the details on here because we'll go in with the pencils and kind of get that all accurate It's kind of this sort of lighter bit here as well. There. Um, and it's quite light here, so we'll add this in. So we've kind of got all the lighter areas in now. We've got some of the blue, some of the black, some of the tanned colours. Um, so this is kind of an underpainting, um, you can keep going with it, which I will do, but I'll do it more in detail working from top to bottom. Um, so I'll leave this video here for the underpainting if you guys want to follow along. And then in step two, I'll go into detail with the pit pastels, working on the ears, eyes, nose and more of the fair detail. So hopefully I'll join you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Hi, welcome to um, the next video. So this is step two. 
So I'm going to go and show you how I will create these eyes on this spaniel. Um, and then I'll also go into a bit more of the fur detail for you. So um, if you'd like to follow along that's fine. I'll kind of show you the pastel pencils I'll be using to create the eyes and some of the techniques. The eyes on this reference photo are actually really dark. So there's not a great deal of... Um, detail within them and because I'm kind of working to a small scale um, it is hard to kind of get all that detail in but we shall see so I'm going to use the pit pastel pencils for this I prefer the pits because they are a much harder pastel than maybe the Carbothellos or the Caran d'Ache so I tend to use the pit pastels for eyes and areas where there's more detail needed because one, they can be sharpened a lot easier because they're a harder uh, pastel and you can just get a little bit more detail in there. So I'm going to start by going in with the black to kind of map out the edges of the eye. I'm just going to sharpen the black a little bit it's kind of looking a little bit blunt at the moment. These are the pit ones, so they kind of look like this. They don't actually have the colours written on them, which they've got the numbers, so it's going to give this a bit of a sharpen. So it's mainly blacks and browns on the eyes with some highlights as well going in there. Um, I need to get a new sharpener, that's why it's taking me ages with the knife. Although the knives are actually good because you can kind of get a shape that you prefer. So I think we'll work on this eye first. So I'm just going to map in the sort of outline area first. straight in this corner here and then down it's kind of got the dark part here Just blocking in some of the dark hairs around it just to kind of frame the eye. Again, going in the direction of the fur.
So I've kind of drawn the, the outline of the eye. Obviously it comes straight down here and then it's got quite a, a thick black kind of water line which I'll fill in here. And then I'm going to go in with the white um, and just add in that the highlights that I can see just so I get those in the right places and make sure that I don't kind of miss them out. Um, that's just the way I prefer to do things. I know some people leave the highlights till the end and I will go back over them at the end but I like to initially get them in just so I can make sure that they look right and they're in the right position so we can kind of see that the there is a little highlight down here and there and then there's one in the centre of the eye here Okay, and we'll go back in with black. Kind of fill in this section up here, which is quite dark around the highlighted area. It kind of cuts across here. And that sweeps down here, joining the other highlights that we've got here. Fills in that gap there really. And then you've got a kind of ready brown in that corner. So for that sort of brown colour I'm going to use the Pit Pastel and it is the 177. I'm going over that white just to knock that back a bit because it's not actually white the highlight in that corner there. And this kind of brownie colour here. Going back in with the black now just to darken up some of these areas here. And then just at the top of the eye here you've got the brown there. And 
darker grey, which is this one here, which is 233 in the Pit Pastel. And knock back this highlight here with that. Adding the highlights in around the eye here. Adding a bit of detail into these highlights. It's hard to see exactly the reflection, but and then dragging this black from the uh, waterline kind of out. Gonna put a tiny bit of blue around here. Adding a bit of lighter highlights to this point. Just so gently tapping the, the pigment on, I'm hardly touching the paper at all. It does look a bit blurry on this video, so apologies for that. It's just because it's so zoomed in. But it's actually a really small eye that I'm doing. But when I zoom out, you should hopefully see. See the detail kind of better in a way. Getting this really dark around here. And then flicking this kind of up into the eyebrow sort of area. We can work on that bit in a moment.
I'm just going to zoom out so you can kind of see it in a bit more detail now. And there we go. So you can kind of see the little highlight under here, which helps it kind of look a bit more 3D and gives the glossy look, which is also like what I've done on here. Um, and you've got the highlight at the top, and then we're going to work more detail into this fur here. So it is kind of getting there. I think once you've got the eyes in, it definitely comes to life a little bit more. I'm just going to crisp up this highlight under here. Going back in with a little bit more brown here, Just highlighting the fur underneath. Some of these little hairs are kind of coming out towards the, the side of the head here. So now we've done that, I'm just going to work on this other eye and I'll meet you back once I've done it. details as you can see here oh, camera's wobbling a bit sorry and um, I'm just gonna kind of go in with a bit more fur detail around the top of the head and the ears um, I'll mainly be using the Faber Castell Pit Pastels um, because they're a harder lead as I've mentioned before so they are better for getting in the um, you know smaller hairs and finer kind of details which is kind of what I used on this dog up here so because there's quite a bit of blue in, I'm going to initially work some blues into the fur um, and then sort of alternate between the greys and the blacks. So I think we'll start at the top of the head here so you can kind of see and I'm using, um, what number is it, 140 which is this blue here which looks quite bright but I think it should work because we're kind of overlaying it with black as well. So we're just going in the direction of the fur and literally putting in all the little hair details, really gently pushing against the paper, hardly touching it to be honest. It's just fanning it out so it kind of blends at the edges so it's not like a harsh blue line.
you'll find that when you're overlaying the pit pastels, the areas where you've got more pigment, it goes on to a much better. So here it's quite thin, the pigment underneath, so you can see the tooth a little bit more. Whereas this area here is going on too much nicer because I've laid down a bit more of an underpainting, which is why it's really good to get a really good strong underpainting underneath because then these lay over it are much nicer and much softer and you don't see the tooth of the paper. So these blue hairs sort of come round here and fan out and you get to the eye. Again I've just got my hand on some glassine paper if that's the noise you can hear because it's it sort of stops all the oils from your hands coming out into the onto the paper. You do actually get if you buy the big boards like I do, you do get the big sheets that come with it anyway. Um, but you can also just take that bit off. You can also buy it um, in rolls as well separately if you run out. Taking this out a little bit here, there's a few hairs there. I might just zoom in a little bit more because I've just noticed it's quite hard to pick it up what I'm doing. So I think I've had enough blue just for the time being there. So I'm just going to go back in now with the black. Again, just really light pressure because you don't want any kind of harsh lines. Um, and obviously with the underpainting when we were putting our layers down we would blend in between each layer. But I'm now going to stop blending. So this is very much about sort of blending with the pencil but not actually blending with any fingers or any tools or anything because you could do that if you wanted more of a soft painterly kind of feel but we want to get these hair details in and we want them to stay there whereas if I was to kind of just rub this now it would just all blend again which is fine if you wanted to keep building and building and building but there is only so much pastel that the pastel mat will hold before the tooth is all filled and then you're going to struggle to get then the fine details on So obviously this is quite a dark part here, so we're going to just flick this up a little bit again, still in the direction of the fur. So I don't know if you can notice, like here you can see the tooth a lot more than you can here. That's because I haven't worked enough underpainting on here, so you can still see a lot of the tooth coming through because I've not done a lot of detail on here yet. Black 
kind of shiny fur used to be really I found used to find it quite difficult but now it's one of the things I really like drawing getting that kind of glossiness to the fur I think this breed is sort of renowned for it as well so you want to make sure that you like capture that especially if it's for a commission and it's someone's dog when they know they've got this like really lovely shiny coat So here you're, it is getting a bit more difficult to add any more pigment down because we've already got quite a lot underneath with the pastel, pan pastels. So then where the ear kind of comes out here, it's kind of quite dark, down here. I'm going to drag this through to that blue that we put there earlier and then drag this up a bit. Soften that area. It's going to work a bit more through here because I didn't quite put enough down underneath. And then again back. It is a bit to and fro because it's kind of getting the right balance between the blending, just back in with the blue a little bit, just bringing this down, to fill in that tooth that you can see that, soften that now. And then you'll notice in the reference obviously we've got the dark, we've got the blue and then we have got, you know, highlights within that as well so you can like leave it like this and again we don't want the highlights to be garish and obvious and a bit in your face but I think what I am going to do is just go in with the lighter sort of grey which is I can't remember what number it is 230 this one here and I'm just going to You'll see here there's it's a little bit more highlighted so hardly touching the paper it's really 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 gentle pressure so there you'll see a slight slight highlight and then coming down here nice and soft now isn't it streakable fur and then back with the folds again just adding a bit of black back up here to intensify that area and I think that's probably the head bit done so now I am actually going to work on, I think I'm actually going to work on these areas to be honest and then work my way down. So as I mentioned I'm going to work on this sort of eye area so I'm going to use these three colours for that. So I've got the 186, 285 and then for the highlights I'm going to use 103. So they should work nicely within these sort of tanned areas here. So as with pastels usually you kind of go in with the dark bits first so on this
this particular eye here we've got brown dark brown here and then it's kind of coming around here quite a ready brown this actually I might just go and get a slightly darker brown over the top of this area as well the brown that we were using in the eye I think I'll just bring incorporate into here widening that a little bit because it was a little bit of an odd shape it's a bit better and I'm going back in with the dark brown over this side as well especially on this little point here tone colour going in now which I'm kind of putting it all over this area so initially it will look quite orange but then we're going to obviously knock that back with the highlight the softer cream and make sure to sort of fan out the edges here where that's what I always do drag the black into the bit under there actually sorry can you hear the rain it's been really bad it's like the wind whistling at the window and then we're going to come over this side again just sort of this out a little bit and just be careful not to drag in the dark colours too much into here although it isn't the end of the world you can kind of blend it that's the good thing about pastel you can kind of just blend over the errors that you make no one will know
as you'll see, you know, the colours aren't, aren't an exact match. Um, but to me, it's, it's definitely more about getting your values right. Especially at the beginning. Obviously, you want the colours to be as close as they can, especially if it is for, like, commission work, like this one will be. Um, however, the photo is oversaturated and... I don't necessarily want the colours to be exactly the same. My work has got a sort of softer feeling, especially with the colours that I use. It's a little bit more muted and that's just the style I work in. So don't feel you have to stick exactly to colours all the time, but definitely stick to getting the darks dark and the lights light and working out where all the shadows are. So that's going into the air there, but then we can see that there's just a tiny, tiny little bit of a highlight where it sort of gives the indication that that's going into the air. So as small as that is, that will make a difference to where the edge of the head is. So we need to make sure we plot that in. Initially when I started drawing I would, um, so for certain areas um, I would actually have a little note at the side just saying, I don't know, the black fur and then list the numbers that I've used to create this then the tanned areas, list the colours so that when you come back you know um, what colours you've done unless you're doing it in one sitting that's fine but um, it's quite good to do that and also you get to know the colours and what combinations work well. Um, pencils that maybe you tend to lean towards the most um, so it's quite a good habit to get into if you can of like just writing down which colours you're using so I'm now just going to go in with the black and just define some of these outer hairs a little bit more softens it up a little bit doesn't it um, I'm now going to go in with the lighter colour and start plotting in some of these highlights here The benefit of pastels you can work over your darks with your lights. It's quite a bright part here, which kind of bulges down a little bit, so get that in. Just blend that in a little bit. keep turning your pencil around it helps to keep it sharp because the pastel might actually kind of naturally sharpens it as it changes shape.
I also find when you're doing these really fine hairs, if you hold the pencil relatively near the end, your pressure's not going to be as harsh, so you can get these hairs in better. Just kind of alternating between the colours at this point and getting all the little hairs in. Obviously it's quite a small scale for pastel so it is a little bit difficult to get all the hair details in. Um, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of this sort of pale kind of grey colour as well. And then I'm going to go back in with that orange, just pop out some of these bright areas because again this really helps to bring out the blue because it's kind of the opposite side of the spectrum to the blue so they complement each other really well Very last minute, just going to add in tiniest, tiniest bit of white here. So now we're going to do the same on the other side here. So I'll time lapse that just so it speeds things up a bit and then I'll meet you back to do the ears. So the detail on the other eye, um, on the eyebrow anyway, is kind of finished. So it's, you know, exactly the same colours that I was doing on this side. So I'm now going to kind of work into the ear, um, plotting in the darks a bit more, 
and getting some of the finer details into the hair. Um, I'll put this on a time lapse just because it speeds things up but the main colours I'll be using are the black, the blue and um, the kind of soft grey um, that we used in the top just for the highlights. Concentrate on the right hand ear and the nose area. completed most of the black shiny fur on the ears and on the nose itself um, so we're now going to be working on the muzzle area the colouring is very similar to the eyebrows so we'll be using the same colours that we use there um, to create this area here so again I'm going to start with the darkest colour that I can kind of see at the moment so for that I'm going to be using the 177 Pit Pastel and I'm just going to go in and really gently layer up the darker colours that I can see in the reference photo. You really don't want to be pushing too hard because we don't want to fill the tooth of the paper too early as this will prevent us from getting all the layers down that we need to. Where I'm putting these darker areas obviously it is more of a tanned colour so we will go back over that with the tan but this is just the sort of second layer after the underpainting really. We want to get this shadowing here so that when we add the whiskers in it looks like there's some depth to where they're coming from um, and you can see it sort of stops in line with the bottom of the nose so we know that this dark area here kind of stops around here. Obviously a lot of my drawings are very basic in their outline sketch. I don't really like to do too much of a detailed line drawing purely because it's quite difficult to then erase all of that detail on pastel mat. However if you want to put more detail down initially that's absolutely fine. Just be mindful of the fact that if you are using pastel mat it can be a little bit tricky to erase on her. So kind of got that line there and then we've got a secondary line here coming down. And then I'm going to go in with a tanned colour, um, which is the 283. And I'm going to just place that all over here and blend it in and I'll come back to you. Okay, so we've kind of done the main muzzle area. I might come back and tweak it a little bit once the nose is in, depending on if I need to take it any darker. And I'm going to work on the nose. 
mainly using the black obviously we've put a tiny little bit of black pan pastel down um, but I'm just going to go in there with the pit pastels and create more detail around here so again like all the areas I'm going to plot in the dark areas first so we can see that the centre point of the nose is here where we put the shadow earlier so I'm going to just draw that shadow in just to make sure I get that in early there and then this centre line follows all the way through so we need to ensure that there's a centre point all the way down here into the nose and make sure that that stays the same so here we've kind of created the centre point so we know it comes down here which isn't that noticeable um, but we'll just slightly sketch it in and then we can get our shading a little bit more accurate like that now make sure you use really really gentle pressure to ensure that you don't fill the tooth of the paper too early again so we're going to block in this sort of darker bit here um, with noses rather than with the fur detail obviously we're using short strokes in the direction of the fur but with nose we're going to use small circular motions like this which helps to create the illusion of the pores in the nose This paper also lends itself quite nicely to the noses because you, if you don't put so many layers down, the paper naturally kind of has that gritty look to it, which actually helps with the texture of noses, I find. And we don't want to outline the edge of the nose because it blends out and that's when noses can look a little bit plonked on. So we want to ensure that we're leaving a soft edge. So if we use small circular motions to do that, we don't get that blunt line. So the nose kind of hangs over a little bit here and comes up. And then out here. And up to there and then across. And there's the highlighted sort of nostril area here so I'm going to kind of leave that for the time being and I'm also just going to drag this out a little bit into this fur here so this is where you would use the fur strokes because obviously it's going into the hairs try and get kind of quite a sharp tip on your pencil if you can So we can wipe this quite dark here because we know that it's pretty much black this side and then over to this side again we can work it relatively dark but still using the circular motions to ensure there's not a blunt edge as such although this side is a little bit more blunt because it's not onto the fur itself so we can make that stand out a little bit more It kind of comes in a little bit here and then goes back out here. Again, I prefer to kind of free draw noses. Obviously, I get the position right, but I don't really put any of the detail in. I think once you start drawing in all the little pores and the nostrils and everything, you can get a bit confused and when it comes to actually shading it I think it's better to just keep cross checking the photo and doing it that way that's just personal preference really now 
and then here coming down it's a little bit darker where the fur is kind of overlapping so we'll do that in the direction of the fur and then small circular motions here but really light pressure because we don't want this area as dark So when I'm at this stage I'll just check and make sure the proportions kind of look right and look like they're in line with the photo. This is especially important when you are working on a commission because the owner will notice all the little differences if there are any. Now I'm just going to go and get a little pencil stump, which are these things here. Um, I think these were just from Jackson's, their own brand ones. They're just basically cardboard rolled up, but they're quite good to blend out for areas that are a bit smaller. But they do them in all different um, show you. thicknesses, so... They have different like size numbers on them, I think. So like a nine. Um, so yeah, they have different kind of sizes on. They're quite handy. So again, when blending, try and still use the same motion that you were using for applying it, because that just helps to keep the technique consistent, really. There we go. So at the minute it's looking particularly dark, but now we're going to introduce the blue that we used on the nose here. Um, I'm just going to try and find it, bear with me. Again, little circular mo motions, I'm hardly touching the paper because you, as you can hear, you can't really hear much friction. It's just really, really soft pressure. Again, it is going to look a little bit strange at this stage because we've still got to add, this is more of the mid-tone no nose, isn't it? So we need to then add the highlight, which will be, I think probably actually will be the white on here. And there is also a little bit of brown there, so I'll do that as well.
I'm just going to add a little bit of the brown, which is the brown that I used at the top of the nose, so that will bring that in, and that is the 177 Pit Pastel, just under here. And then I'm going to go back in with the black and I'm just going to define the bottom of the nose slightly. Sorry, that's my two-year-old in the background. Um, and then just to bring this out a bit, I'm going to go in with the grey um, 233. Again, just really gently. We don't want it obviously highlighted, it's just to make this bit stand out a little bit more. Yeah, I'm just kind of doing tiny, tiny, it obviously looks bigger to you guys, but tiny dots here on the top of the nose with this grey and I'll also go back over with the white as well. I'm going to go in with the, I think I'm not going to pick white, I'm going to go for the slightly off white, um, which is the 230. I think white might look a little bit too bright. <clears throat> so I'm just going to plot in 
this nostril here. So there's a bit of a highlight here. And there's a bit of a highlight this side, so it's sort of in line with it. Actually, I'm going to use a tiny bit of white, but not in all of it, just... I'm just going back in with the black and following this centre line up here. And then I'm going to add a little bit more white. And then just take that back with your finger so it's not as bright. I think we're about there. I'm just going to add some, if you see at the top of the nose, there's quite a few little hairs coming onto the nose, so I'm just going to do those. Again, I'm hardly touching the paper for this, it's like really subtly. And there are also a few of the red sort of hairs, so I'm just going to go in and do a few of those as well.
So that's kind of the end of the nose section. I'll just zoom out so you can see it a bit better because it is hard to do that. It's coming together now. So we'll go on to the next part. So I'm now going to focus on the pores. I've just finished off the ear here and mainly used black hair with a few highlights of the blue along the fair line at the bottom. Um, but the majority is just penciled in with black on this area. So for the pores, again, it's a similar colour to here. They are slightly lighter on the reference photo, so it won't be as much of the tan colour. So I'm going to initially use... I'll show you the th sort of four colours that I'll be mainly using for the pores. So they are the 186, the 103, 233 and 230. So it's kind of these four colours I think all blended together. Obviously I know we've got the base colour down already with the pan pastels that we did um, right at the beginning. So I'm going to work in with the grey first off and I'm just going to lay this down in the darker areas where the tan will be. around here there's a kind of ridge and that goes up from that point now I've added already added the black sections and just so they're like reference points really um, kind of create the shapes from They are slightly out of focus anyway, these feet, so the level of detail won't be the same as on the face. The face is the area that we want to try and capture the most. being quite rough really with it, just mainly sketching out the shapes that you see. So I think with anything you draw, it's making sure that you don't presume things. So don't draw what you th think is there, you literally need to be drawing what you're looking at and not interpreting it as anything other than shapes and values and then it will suddenly come together it's kind of where the nails are I think although you can't really see under the thick fur but and that's kind of a highlighted area here I'm going to go in with this tan colour now back up to this point here. Again, I'm not pushing hard because I don't want to fill all the tooth in yet until I've got a lot more layers down and colours down. Also, I think the more layers you can get down, the more depth it gives it as well. This section kind of here 
has got a bit of a towel colour going on. Now I'm just going in with the lighter colour which is the um, 230 which is kind of a warm grey and I'm just going to block in some of the lighter colours again not too much detail still because this is then going to all be blended out which I'll show you how to do in a moment. It's kind of at the ugly stage at the minute still, but it will hopefully come together. That actually is a bit more up here, so I'm just going to widen that slightly. Um, so I'm now going to use. Oh, pencil's falling. I'm now going to use <coughs> one of the pencil stumps that I showed you earlier. So this is just the number three, um, and I'm just going to go in the direction of the fur and just blend this through a little bit.
So now I'm going to work across and I'm going to go back in with a bit more detail. So up here we've kind of got a bit more grey. We've actually got a bit more black um, as well coming out. If you wonder why the black's got this on it, this is, um, I'm sure you've probably seen them before, but if you haven't, they are pencil extenders. Um, you can get them really cheap on Amazon or eBay. And basically, if you're coming towards the end of your pencil and they get a little bit difficult to hold, you can um, pop them into here, basically, so it extends the life of them a bit. So you can work down until they're kind of right down here and they just slot in um, and then you push them into the base and just screw them on. She says, not able to do it. So it's kind of like that and you just pop them in and then fix this over the top and it just tightens on. Just makes it easier to hold especially if you're doing the lighter pressure and you want to hold it at the end um, and you can get more use out of the pencil so you get more pastel for your money by doing that I'm just dragging out this fur here to soften the edging of it here it kind of comes down so this is the finished dog um, as you can see I've kind of just blended out the paws here and kept it quite soft because I want the focus to be on the face so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you like the finished drawing um, for more content like this please make sure you subscribe to the channel um, and also hit the bell button so you can be notified when new channels are released thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye